Presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. It is like a party at Rogers Centre lately for the second consecutive day yesterday. The Blue Jays had over 47,000 fans in attendance. First time since July 2006. It's the largest crowd that's non-opener for the Blue Jays. Tori Lavello's Red Sox trying to win the season series. The teams have split the first 18 games, 9-9. Nine and nine. Let's take a look at the Red Sox lineup. Had a dramatic comeback in the ninth inning last night. Mookie Betts has worn out the Blue Jays this season. 406 average against Toronto. He scored 19 runs against the Blue Jays. And he has just been a red hot hitter. And down in the bottom of the order, Jackie Bradley Jr. He had the big blow in the ninth inning, a two run home run. They've got the Red Sox right back in it. He's hit extra base hits. 24 of his last 33 hits have been for extra bases. And he has really done some damage against the Blue Jays. They'll take on Mark Burley here this afternoon. A red hot offense, so Mark Burley's going to have to be on his game. He's going to get ready for his 29th start of the season. Uh, Burley is 14 and 7 with a 366 earned run average. Last time out, he had five innings and only gave up one earned run to the Atlanta Braves. He was lifted for a pinch hitter in that sixth inning. So he's only able to get five innings in, five and two over his last seven starts versus the Red Sox with a very good earned run average at 361. As a member of the Blue Jays, he needs to come up big this afternoon against Boston. Well, he sure does. He needs to slow down this Boston Red Sox team. 17 degrees. It's a spectacular Sunday afternoon. Burley is set. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It is downstairs for a ball. And we are underway. Mookie Betts. He has 11 extra base hits against the Blue Jays this season. He was one for five in the game yesterday. That extended his personal hit streak to 19 straight games against the Jays. I think you got to pitch him away. You got to make him go the other way because he is so quick on the inner half. Three and zero. Oh, Burley falls behind Mookie Betts. There's a strike. What are you looking for to tell you that Burley might have a good game here this afternoon? His arm angle. He's got to make sure he stays up on top of that baseball. His cutter is so much better, and his changeup is so much better. Well, he walks Mookie Betts to start the game. Let's take a look at the defense, and it's always important. Burley pitches to contact. He's got to have a good defense behind him. Revere Pilar and Bautista in the outfield on the infield left side is very important with the lefty Burley on the mound Donaldson and Goins on the left side Pennington Colabello on the right side and Deanna Navarro catching Burley for the 10th time this season and we will highlight Deanna Navarro the last time he caught Mark Burley was August the 13th they have really worked well together they have a chemistry I believe between them and he gets to start this afternoon with Burley. Dustin Bedroya takes an inside pitch one and one to the Red Sox second baseman. He did not play in the game on Friday night. He was back in the lineup yesterday and had a triple and a big walk in the ninth inning. Burley of course has one of the best pickoff moves in baseball. Mookie Betts is a threat to steal. He's got 19 stolen bases. Russell Martin threw out Mookie Betts on Friday night. Boy, he's got a big lead, and he's got a foot on that artificial surface, and now they're doing a little groundskeeping over at first base. There's a lot of dirt piled up in front of the base on the inside part of first base, so Brown and Nor, the first base umpire, was cleaning it up a bit. Got a really big lead right here, but he's doing the right thing. He's freezing when Burley picks that front leg up. Madroya fouls it straight back. And that will help you to stop down and shut down that running game. Him just freezing long enough. As a base runner, you really don't want to get caught leaning one way or another unless you're going. Took a shot at that outside quarter and missed just barely down and away. Bernie's making his third start against the Red Sox this season. He pitched very well against them here on Canada Day. Beat them nine to one, seven strong innings. Two and two to Pedroia. 
On the ground. Bounce past Pennington into center field. Buki Betts is going to go first to third. And Pedroia has a base hit. And immediately the Red Sox have something cooking against Mark Burley. Lead off walk and then a, a single through the middle. The Red Sox picking up where they left off last night. Uh, this looked like it might have been a base hit. It looked like Pennington leaned to his left as that pitch was being delivered. And that sends Betts to third base. Xander Bogart's the number three hitter. He homered in the sixth. That was the first run of the ball game. And then he had a base hit in the ninth. Red Sox scored five in the ninth. Xander Bogarts is second in the American League in hitting, batting 321. Showed He's off some power yesterday, didn't he? High knuckleball that he sent out of here for a sixth home run. He's really developed into one of the premier young players in baseball. He's just 22 years old. He's delivered in the clutch. That's why they have him hitting in this third spot in the order. Line drive. Goins will go to third. Not in time. Good job by Betts. The third base base runner read it on the line, throws, and was able to get back in time. Yeah, and Josh Donaldson looked like he was hard charging at third base. He's going to talk to, to Mookie there. I don't know if he, his momentum took him into the runner. This is a liner right at the shortstop. Here comes Goins, always thinking heads up. You can see he just kind of cross body blocks him around the bag. Bits is safe, but Josh, he'd stumble a little bit over the map. Oh, excuse me, over the, the base. And I think that's why he went back and talked to him. Yeah, I think he. Mentioned to Mookie, hey man, my bad. Sorry about that. Momentum took him right across the base. So it's first and third. Pedroia at first, but that's it at third for David Ortiz. Ortiz had an RBI in that ninth inning that made him the all time RBI leader against the Blue Jays. He's driven in 179 runs against the Jays for his career. He's had some success against Mark Burley, batting 333 for his career. 28 for 84. These two have faced each other a lot. So no surprises here. He surprised him with that heater. Tied him up inside at 84 miles an hour. That's something to look at also. Arm strength, I think, is very important for Burley. In his last few starts, I just haven't seen the, the arm strength that we saw earlier in the season. Just two miles an hour more makes all the difference. Well, explain the difference between arm strength and velocity. Well, arm strength allows you to get the ball up, get your arm up. When you don't have that arm strength, your arm starts creeping down just a little bit, and you get on the side of the baseball, and you don't have the movement, especially for Mark Burley. He needs that type of movement, so he's got to be able to stay on top of it. A little chopper right at home. So when you have that type of arm strength, you can keep your arm up longer. You can keep the hand on top of the baseball, and you can get a little bit more depth on your cutter. You can get a little bit more movement on your changeup. I haven't seen that from him his last few starts. Now, Burley's had a couple of shots in that shoulder, and what happens is when you feel pain, you go to the position where it hurts the least. One and two to Ortiz. Downstairs, now it's two and two. Yeah, pitchers and players, for that matter, will pitch to the area of the less pain. Wherever it hurts the least, you'll put that arm there, and he's back up a little bit higher today. Yeah, and if your arm starts dropping just a little bit, that's what you don't want, and it's a red flag for pitching coaches to look for. Travis Shaw is on deck. 3-2, one out. Pedroia is at first. Mookie Betts at third. Foul back. You can see even Ortiz has doubts in his mind as to what he might get on this 3 2 pitch. Ground ball. Pennington goes to Donaldson. Back up first. Double play. 
The Blue Jays playing in that shift. Pennington looked like he bobbled it for a moment. But Donaldson was there at the bag at second. And the third baseman, of course, has a strong arm. Ortiz hits it hard, but right into the shift. Four, five, three, double play. Make it a scoreless top half of the first. Let's look at the lineup for John Gibbons, Blue Jays. Ben Revere, Josh Donaldson, and Jose Bautista. Bautista has been terrific. In September, he's batting 310. That's when you want your big players to step up, and he's done that. He had a home run in the ninth inning last night on the first pitch to make it a 7 6 ball game. Kevin Pillar this season against the Red Sox has done a great job, batting 357. He's got seven doubles and six RBIs down at the bottom of the order. And he's been a big bat all season long against Boston. This is a really interesting story right here. Rich Hill, there are his career numbers, 198 games. He's 24 and 22, just his second major league appearance this year for what? Hill. He was released by the Nationals June the 24th, signed by the Red Sox. Last time out, he made his first start in six years. Last time, 2009, with the Baltimore Orioles was the last time he made a start in the big leagues. Mitch Hill was drafted by the Cubs of the University of Michigan in 2002. He's a fourth round pick. He grew up in the Boston area, Milton, Mass. And this is his second stint with Boston. He spent parts of three seasons with the Red Sox. What should we look for from Hill this afternoon? I think you'll see that sweeping breaking ball right there with two strikes to left handed batters fastball over the top. He doesn't throw that hard. Not like he did when he was a younger player. Change ups to right handers sweeping breaking balls to left handers. Fastball on the corner. Rich Hill gets his first strike out of the afternoon. Well Mark Burley was in trouble in the first inning and given up a walk and a base hit there. You can see how excited the dugout is, Marcus Stroman especially. Really pleased that Burley was able to pitch out in that first inning jam with the double play. He's cheering hard for his papa, isn't he? <laughs> They've got a great relationship. This is Josh Donaldson. He goes after the first pitch. Blue Jays have only three hitters in their lineup today that have ever had an at bat against Rich Hill, so they're all kind of doing a little surveying as they go up there today. Well, he certainly was really good his last time out against Tampa Bay. He was spotting pitches like that. He had 10 strikeouts in seven innings, only gave up one hit to the Rays. Rich Hill's dealt with a multitude of injuries. He had shoulder surgery in 2009, had Tommy John surgery in 2011. There's that sweeping breaking ball. It's an unusual breaking ball, and it's a little bit like Sid Fernandez's breaking ball. He gets underneath it, but it sweeps and breaks across and down. It's a challenging curveball. Yeah, yeah. You, as a right-handed batter, you should be able to see the hump of that ball as soon as it comes out of his hand. But you're right. Throws it from a lower three-quarter angle. There's a breaking ball. It's going to be a tough play for Bogarts. He makes it on the run. 
Good play by the young shortstop Xander Bogarts. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense for Boston. They've got a lot of speed in their outfield with Bruce Nick Castillo, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Luke Betts. Pablo Sandoval playing at third base for the first time in this series. Bogarts and Pedroia up the middle. Travis Shaw at first and Sandy Leon catching Rich Hill for the second straight time. Dustin Pedroia back in there. He's a four-time gold glover. That's most ever by a Red Sox infielder. The only other Red Sox second baseman to ever win a gold glove. That was Doug Griffin way back in 1972. Dustin Pedroia, he's a special, special player. Rookie of the year, MVP. Gold Glover, All-Star, Silver Slugger. He's done it just about all. This is his 10th season in the big leagues. Bautista takes the first pitch strike from Hill. There's that breaking ball again. Jose Bautista's had a terrific month of September. Batting 310. He's also hit 35 home runs against the Red Sox. Pops this one up. Sandoval got a late break from third. He calls for it, gets there, and makes the catch. Three up, three down. The Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the first. We've played an inning in Rogers Center. No score. Talk about Mark Burley and his arm angle. What did you see from Burley in that first inning? I saw him get on top of the ball. We were talking about that. When you're on top of the ball, I think you can stay on top of it, and the hand stays on it, and you can work the ball. When he is not, and you start dropping down, you start going like this, and you start working underneath the ball, and that's when the ball starts flattening out. You don't get the break on the on the uh, change up. You don't get the break on the cutter, anything like that. I think it's important that he stays on top and shows that arm strength. He's able to get on top of that breaking ball to Travis Shaw for a strike. Another breaking ball, strike two. That's going to drop for a base hit. An 0 2 base hit to Shaw as he starts off the Boston second. Travis Shaw had two hits in last night's game. He was walked intensely in that ninth inning. So Burley has given up two hits and a walk so far. He got a double play off the bat of Ortiz to end the first. Pablo Sandoval, he has not played in this series. He's been ill. He's been dealing with a fever. In fact, on Friday night, they sent him back to the hotel. Little squibber off the end of the bat. Russell Martin, or excuse me, Navarro calls for it, and the honor throws the first in time to get Sandoval. Gianna Navarro out quickly. He called Burley off, so Mark would clear space for Navarro, who made a good, strong throw. Communication so important, especially on these types of ball, right out in front of home plate. It's an easier play for Navarro because he can spin like that. That lines his shoulder up over to first base. Navarro and Martin have both had terrific seasons catching.
calling games, throwing out base runners. Navarro's thrown out 40% of the base stealers this season. Says Rusnik Castillo, the left fielder. The Red Sox sent 10 men to the plate in that ninth inning. They scored five runs on five hits. Castillo had an RBI single in the ninth. Burley is ahead, 0-2. Mark Burley is not going to change his approach. He's going to throw a lot of strikes. He's going to challenge you to put the ball in play. But if he does stay on top, he's going to get a little more depth on his fastball, much more depth on his changeup, and the breaking ball should be better. Yeah, and they don't square it up. That's when you get a lot of ground ball outs. We mentioned Deanna Navarro and Burley. They really have a good chemistry. In fact, Burley's ERA is almost two runs lower when he throws to Navarro compared to when he throws to Russell Martin. They just worked so well together last year. What Deanna did, and we saw it with Estrada. He started incorporating that fastball just a little bit more. High in the strike zone, right hands, right handers. He's been cutting the fastball inside just a little bit more. With Russell Martin catching Burley, Mark has a 445 earned run average. When Navarro catches him, it's 247. And it's not a knock on Russell, it's just the fact that Burley and Navarro really mesh well. Navarro will call pitches very quickly. Burley doesn't shake off catchers. No. He figures that catcher's going to do all the homework. He doesn't look at video, he doesn't look at scouting reports, he just leans heavily on his catcher. Foul back by Castillo. You got a little bit more on the fastball. You can see it at 85. The last time Burley faced the Red Sox a couple of starts ago, fastball was just 80, 81 miles an hour. There's a pop up. Pilar broke back. Pennington out into shallow center makes the catch. That ball was off the end of the bat. Kevin Pilar broke back, reacting to the swing of Castillo. You know, and you talked about the sun also. You've got to deal with that, I think, the center fielder. So Pennington heads up. This is a changeup. Watch where it's right off the end of the bat. So that ball's not going anywhere. Watch Pilar at center field. Initially, the big swing, he steps back, and that's all you need. To not get that ball, and Pennington realizes that and calls him off. This is Sandy Leon. He's a switch hitter. And we mentioned he is catching Rich Hill for the second start. Hill made his first start last time out, and Leon did a good job catching. Two outs, man at second. You know, you talk about catchers matching up with certain pitchers. I had Jim Clancy and he was kind of my guy when I was catching Blue Jays and he and I were on the same page a lot. This has popped up. Burley pointing to it. Colobello, the first baseman, sees it, makes the catch, and Burley is out of the second. A leadoff single, nothing more. The Red Sox have stranded a pair through two innings.
different swings. First to change up, and you can see that hurt, that finger that he has brought in the and, and then Miley said, you know what? If the finger is bothering you, I'm going to try and slip a fastball by you. And uh -uh, that wasn't going to happen. Ibwit hits it off the facing of that second deck for his 34th home run. That might be the last fastball he gets on the inner half this series. That's like trying to slip a piece of cheese by a mouse. It just doesn't happen. Boy, he crushed that ball and stood right in the batter's box to enjoy it. His 34th home run of the season. Kind of soon called for the swing. Edwin, 34 home runs, 103 RBIs. He's hit 15 home runs in his last 34 games. Boy, he and Bautista have really stepped up here in the latter stages of this season. Don't you like to see that? When the games mean something, when they're important like that, your big guys coming up with big hits. Well, it certainly takes the load off some of the less experienced players. Breaking ball, pull to the hole, base hit for Encarnacion. It's That's a, a big curveball. And it's a controlled swing from Edwin. He's just a good hitter. On top of a power hitter, you can see underneath that one, a little breaking ball that sweeps to the inner half. On top of a power hitter and a productive hitter, he's a good hitter. That is a solid, short, compact swing from a slugger. So he's aboard for Chris Colabella, who always likes to swing early in his advance. First pitch breaking ball down the stairs. Boy, he had a good rip. He was looking fastball and found it straight back to the screen. Kissing the heater and he got it from Rich Hill. Yeah, the numbers for Colabello over his last 27. And he was an experienced guy. He's 35 years old. I mean, he's been around for a while. He just hasn't been in the big leagues for a couple of seasons. But he's been around. And slow breaking ball in there for a strike. You know what you can't do if you're batting? You can't give up on that pitch. You might see it up and away, but you got to track it all the way to home plate. Chris thought that ball was out of the strike zone, and he's letting Alan Porter know it. One and two to Colabello. High fastball. Second strikeout for Rich Hill. It's a simple approach. Hill uses the fastball and the curveball. That's about the only pitches he's going to throw this afternoon. Yeah, he'll, he'll stick with it. Yeah, he'll mix in a change up every now and then, especially to right handers. But you're going to get that fastball and that big sweeper. Yanner Navarro, a switch hitter batting right handed against the lefty Hill. on the 17th in Atlanta that last game there the honor had three hits looks like that swing is starting to come around just a little bit more he was three for four with a fly ball to left field that he hit sharply Kevin Pilar pushes it up the first base line he is safe Terrific play against the left-handed pitcher he's going to fall off toward the third base foul line and Pilar 
Executed it perfectly. Well, he recognized that the right side of the infield was back. They were playing deep with the right-hander Pilar at the plate, so he's just going to drop it down. Travis Shaw was waiting for the ball to get to him. Look, he's waiting. He's waiting. He said, I can't get too far away from first base if I'm going to make the tag. And Pilar executes it perfectly for an infield hit. Ah, shades of Robbie Alomar right there at first base. Pilar is the threat to run with Goins at the plate. Pilar has 19 steals. Big breaking ball missed outside. Hill's catcher today, Sandy Leone, has done a terrific job of throwing out base runners. He's got 9 of 16. That's 66%. He's got a strong arm, and he'll throw to first. Well, that was a very suspicious <laughs> move to first. Rich doesn't have a great move. I, I wouldn't classify it in the Mark Burley mode. It's it, it's okay, but that time it barely stepped over to first base. And he just picks it up and drops it almost in the same spot. Troy Lavello, the interim manager for the Red Sox. Boston and the Blue Jays have split the first 18 games, nine apiece. It's the season finale for these two. There's a breaking ball strike. It's one and one. Pilar's at first base with that bunt. That gives him 26 hits against the Red Sox this season. He and Josh Donaldson have the most hits against Boston this year, 26. There's that veteran aspect of Rich Hill just trying to freeze Pilar at first. He just held the ball. He had no intention of doing anything other than having the umpire call time. Just going to wait everybody out. He might have got a little confused right there. Pilar took a very aggressive lead, and when he came to a set position, actually walked back towards first base. Hopped back to first base, like anticipating like he was going to throw over there. I think if the Blue Jays can guess right on his curveball because it takes so long, that would be the pitch that you want to steal on. He you know, uses that fastball to get ahead of Goins. It's one and two. If I'm going to run, I'm running right here. You expect it to be a curveball on the 2 2 pitch. And if it's not, if it's fastball, Goins has been doing a pretty good job against right as you figure that he's going to make contact. Just make sure he goes home if you are going to steal. Not running. There's the breaking ball, and he pops it into the seats. Let's take a look at that home run one more time for Navarro. High fastball. And boy, does he ever get on top of that one and finish that swing. Short, right to the baseball. You don't want to drop that backside on those high fastballs. You want to stand tall, just like he did. Breaking ball, base hit to left field. Pilar stops at second. Goins stayed back and hammered that high breaking ball in the left. Boy, if he could keep that swing like we just saw against the left-hander, stay on that ball, he's going to be a good hitter. Those are some of the things that he has improved on. Watch how he keeps that front shoulder in. He doesn't collapse it, doesn't try and pull it, just inside outs that ball the other way. Balance, look at the balance at the plate.
Cliff Pennington fouls it straight back over the screen and out of play. Brooke Jacoby, they're going to want to make a copy of that going swing. That was picture perfect. This is Cliff Pennington, the second baseman. What a valuable pickup Pennington has been. And they picked him up with a healthy Troy Tulowitzki just with depth in mind. And now he's playing an important role with Tulowitzki out. Yeah, they needed a veteran at, at the time. Remember, they weren't real sure about Devin Travis, how long he was going to be out. And just in case either Cohen's or Tulowitzki had to miss time, they needed a veteran guy to fill in. Devin Travis with the team once again. <laughs> Bennington called out on that fastball. He was surprised by the late call from Alan Porter, the home plate umpire. Three strikeouts for Rich Hill. They've all been fastball strikeouts. Two of them taking. Bennington got called out on a pitch like that yesterday for strike three. I can't believe that one was called a strike. Back to the top of the order, Ben Revere. He was called out on a fastball his first time up. You can go on the crack of the bat, and that's exactly what he did. Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field recognized that he's got a straight line right to the ball. It's one hop and an accurate, strong throw, but Pilar goes around the tag one more time. Watch this. He is by the catcher and gets that hand on the plate before he's tagged. Heck of a base hit and a heck of a slide by Pilar for the third run. We have seen Josh Donaldson use this slide. Pilar does it very effectively as well. He clears the catcher and then reaches back with his hand to swipe home plate. Terrific slide right around Leon. Ben Revere with his 14th ribby since coming to the Blue Jays. Goins at second. Oh, you're talking about that home plate slide? Well, nobody does it better than Josh Donaldson. First against the Indians on the left as he avoids the tag and he's safe there. And then on the right, that was in this series right here. Players are going to have to learn to do that, I think, with the new rules where the catcher's going to give you a lane. You just have to stay away from the plate and then have to reach back. Because there's no collisions, you can jump in head first. Now. Exactly, and it takes away the catcher's strength. You can go in head first and dive around the tag because you know the catcher's not going to block home plate. One and two, two outs. Donaldson late on that fastball. Hill ends up striking out the side. But the Blue Jays get five hits. They score three runs. Deanna Navarro gets it all started. The 210th home run the Blue Jays have hit this season. And the Blue Jays have a 3 nothing lead.
to tie the game. Asuna being only 20 years old has not had a lot of these moments in his career. Yesterday though, after the game, he was helped by a lot of the veterans. And it started with R.A. Dickey, who said that he learned from Greg Maddox in the 2013 WBC. It's about two things when you're a reliever. Confidence and short memory. Latroy Hawkins, whose locker is right beside as soon as went to him yesterday and said, hey, you're a reliever. These things happen. One of the beautiful things about being a reliever is you get an opportunity to go out and pitch the very next day. I spoke to Asuna today. He says, I'm ready. Give me the ball. I want to go back out there. A lot of good support staff around these young players, Buck. Uh, that's how you put a team together, and they all have a different role in Osuna's development. Mark Burley strikes out Jackie Bradley Jr. to start the third. Well, it was the just the third time that Aaron Sanchez and Roberto Osuna gave up runs in the same ball game, and it was the first time that a Roberto Osuna ever gave up three runs in a game. But you put him right back on the horse, get him back up on the saddle quickly, and get him right back out there. You got to remember, this is the first time many of these players have ever been through a pennant race. And it's the first full season for both of these two youngsters. So there are a lot of learning curve moments. And I'll take my chances Absolutely. with them. Absolutely. Both of them. Mookie Betts pops it down the right side. That's going to be into the seats. One out, third inning. The Blue Jays haven't lost consecutive home games since August 14th and 15th. That was against the New York Yankees. Burley has pitched well here at Rogers Center all season long. He's got an 8 and 1 record at home. Kevin Pilar gets a good read. That's a shoulder high pitch. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Kansas City is going through a bit of a rough stretch. The Tigers have made it difficult on them. There's a fly ball on the first pitch. Ben Revere coming in. No problem for Mark Burley. How about eight pitches? He retires the side in order in the third. Tribute to the Canadian Forces, and today we salute Master Corporal Tracy Porter. In 2009, she deployed in support of Joint Tour Task Force in Afghanistan as part of Operation Athena, and she received the Commanding Officer's Commendation for outstanding service in performance of her duties throughout Operation Athena. Master Corporal Tracy Porter, today's Sunday salute. Well, Mary, the Blue Jays have made it a nice tradition as they acknowledge the. Canadian forces man or woman that's honored on a Sunday. They'll come in and congratulate her. Ben Revere has made a point of giving them a big hug. Thank you for your service. It's a nice touch. 
Jose Bautista behind Owen Chu. He popped out to the third baseman his first time up. How about the year that Jose has put together once again? 30 homers, 100 runs scored, 100 RBIs, and 100 walks. That's the fourth time that Jose has done that since 2010. There have only been two other players that have done it once. And Bautista has done it four times. The other two players are pretty good as well Albert Pujols and Miguel Cabrera, but no one can come close to what Bautista has done since 2010. And oh, by the way, his favorite team, the Red Sox, for hitting home runs. It is 35th home run against them in yesterday's game. His 36th on the season. The 100 walks are the ones that that, that really impresses me. Because he's, he's a slugger. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a slugger and he's a run producer, yet he will take his share of walks. That's four different seasons now that Jose has had 100 walks as a Blue Jay. Only Carlos Delgado can say that. And he's done that. Breaking ball deep in the hole. Bogars makes a strong throw in time. This kid can really play. He's just 22 years old, and they didn't really know where they were going to put him defensively. He played a little bit of third, played a little bit of short. There was even some thought maybe he'd play the outfield. But I think he's found a home at short. Not anymore. He has worked very hard and tirelessly with Brian Butterfield to get jumps on the balls like that. Come up with the soft hands to make that play, and he's got plenty of arm. He is a smooth player. Well, Butterfield said that Bogarts is the most improved player from one year to the next that he's ever seen. High praise from a man that's been around the game for a long time. Edwin Encarnacion. And came off that bat once again, and we've seen that a lot with that injured knuckle on his left hand. Watch the follow through high fastball takes that hand off just to so he doesn't roll that top hand over there and feels there it is again. That's five strikeouts now for Rich Hill. Something that he did last time out he had 10 strikeouts against Tampa Bay in his season debut. Little split change right there. It totally totally fools Edwin. And Bautista, of course, and Encarnacion talking about that last pitch. Chris Colobello makes a breaking ball strike. Colobello earlier this season had an 18 game hit streak. One of the longest hit streaks this season in the American League. Edwin Encarnacion, he has the longest hit streak in the majors this season at 26 games. Nelson Cruz had a 21 gamer, Kipnis a 20 gamer, Mookie Betts and Colabella both with 18 game hit streaks. Troy Chulowitzki had a 21 game hit streak while he was with the Rockies in the National League. The Blue Jays. Scored three runs in the second. Deanna Navarro had a two run home run. Ben Revere had an RBI single. You now has another strikeout. That's six strikeouts through three innings. But the Blue Jays have a three nothing lead for Mark Burley.
John Farrell. And with more on John Farrell, let's check in with our own Hazel May. Buck, I spoke with members of the Red Sox coaching staff earlier today, and they told me that on most home games, Farrell does show up at Fenway Park. He sits in his office and meets with his staff. Now, he rarely steps out onto the playing field, but by the time BP is over, the coaching staff literally has to force him to go home and rest. Farrell has kept in close contact with his very good friend and interim Red Sox manager, Tori Lovello, and his coaching staff. In fact, when the Red Sox were in Baltimore, Farrell Skyped the coaches during one of his treatments. And I'm told he's in a tough stretch right now. He just completed the second of three rounds of chemotherapy. I'm told he's doing well. He's staying strong and keeping positive. But the Red Sox coaches wanted me to let everyone know that they have indeed passed along everyone's thoughts and well wishes. Buck. Thank you very much, Hazel. Of course, John Farrell was here with the Blue Jays as a manager. He's dealing with lymphoma battling that and he is a strong man a very strong willed man and he's getting a lot of support from his players his coaches and yeah. the Boston community as well said that it was going to be a really rough stretch for him a rough patch and he's ready for it as a former player as long as you have a game plan you know what you're going to, to do you can get your mind set and ready for it he knows it's going to be tough but the bottom line is they think he's going to be okay Brian Goins knocks it down, but he doesn't have a play. So Xander Bogarts will have another hit. Goins, Rob Bogarts on a line drive in the first. He almost took another hit away from him right there, but it's an infield single for Bogarts. You're almost surprised when they don't come up with these types of plays. He gets a great jump on it. He gets to it. Looked like he had it in the glove and then fell out, and you could see his reaction. That is a total reaction that saying, I should have caught that ball. Yeah, in fact, he actually over overran it just a little bit, hit him on the, the heel of the glove. David Ortiz bounces the ball to Colabello, who bobbles it and will flip to Burley. Now they're going to go to third. Burley throws it to Donaldson, and that's going to lead to a run. Xander Bogarts took advantage of the shift, and once he got to second base, he just turned and headed for third. And Donaldson was near second base, so it was a foot race, and Mark Burley tried to hit him on the run and couldn't make connections with Donaldson. You know, when you're in that shift, you have to be weary of that. That third base is going to be open. So Donaldson had to go to second base because he felt like the ball was going to come to him. But when the ball is bobbled for Colabella, Donaldson is sprinting over there. And this is a tough target to hit. And that will cost them a run. Broken bat. Burley's not going to get there. Travis Shaw is safe as Burley had a late break. Remember, Burley just ran the first on the previous play, and now he had to retreat and go back to first, and Travis Shaw beat him in the foot race to the bag. I think the bat shattering might have had something to do with Mark's slow reaction to get over to first base. Watch it one more time. It's a good pitch. I'm not sure where the bat is, and by that time, Shaw's going to beat it. Yeah, you could see Burley. He wasn't really sure where the barrel of that bat was, but both Navarro and Colabella are out to help Mark catch his breath. Travis Shaw has an infield hit. So two infield hits and an air have led to a Red Sox run. So Mark Burley charged with his third air of the season. Four time Gold Glover. That's a high number for him. Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval came from the San Francisco Giants as a free agent. Signed in the offseason by the Red Sox. If this went into shallow center, long run for Pilar. He's going to get there and makes the catch as Sandoval's retired. That's another tough swing because it was off the end of the bat. And you respect the power of Sandoval. You got that right. That it's one of the toughest plays for an outfielder, especially a center fielder, because he's looking straight in to that batter. He sees the full swing like that. He's anticipating that ball over his head. Castillo hits it fair just inside the line. That's down the left field line. Shaw's headed for third. He'll get there. 
And Castillo has a two out double. So the Red Sox second time through the order have three hits off of Burley this inning. Well it's the most solid one of the inning. You got the infield grounder and then the mishap on the Shaw ball. This one is hits stung hard by Castillo right on the line. Looked like it might have hooked foul. But it's right on the line for extra bases. Sandy Leon. Switch hitting catcher with runners at second and third. Do not assume a thing about the Red Sox laying down. They want to rain on the Blue Jays parade. We saw that last night. Blue Jays had a 4 2 lead. Going to the top of the ninth, and the Red Sox struck for five runs. And like every team in the American League East, they make you earn every out, don't they? Burley, 3 0 now. Jackie Bradley Jr. is on deck. He's a lefty hitter. Burley's not going to give in to Leon here. You can make him expand the zone right now. Get him to chase something. Popped it up. Pennington, the second baseman, makes the grab. The Red Sox get on the board. They score on a burly air, but he strands a pair. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead. Presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. A beautiful fall-like afternoon here in Toronto. And it's a 3-1 Blue Jays lead as they are set to bat in the bottom of the fourth. The Blue Jays have a three and a half game lead over the New York Yankees. The Yankees will play later on tonight in New York against the Mets. CC Sabathia against Matt Harvey. In a marquee matchup. Gianna Navarro jumped on the first pitch back in the second inning, hit a two run home run off Rich Hill, his fourth home run of the season. Sweeping breaking ball. It is an unusual breaking ball. It doesn't necessarily break straight down, but it 
breaks wide and down at the same time. Kind of a big sweeping breaking ball. Once he got that arm back up in that position, the big break started coming. He was dropping his arm angle a little bit last season, trying to get more break, and, and he lost it. He had to spend some time in Long Island, didn't he? Pitch for the Long Island Ducks in the Independent League. Breaking ball. Sandoval with the. He got to it all right, but then he just missed it. Navarro's aboard. We'll see how they score that one. It's a single for Navarro, his second hit of the afternoon. The Blue Jays now have six base hits. It's tricky turf here. You can see that's a very small glove for Sandoval. It's a tricky turf, and he got to it. And then missed on it. If he had a bigger glove, he might have caught it. Kevin Pilar had a bunt base hit and scored a run in the second. Blue Jays scored three runs on five hits in the second. They sent eight men to the plate against him. Kevin Pilar turned his season around with a terrific month in June. He was the Honda Player of the Month for the Blue Jays. He hit 365 in June. And he hit rock bottom in May. He was really scuffling in May, and they revamped his whole approach. Yeah, they made the late kick. So what, what do you have to do? you got to go back to the drawing board, right? Try some different things, and they... Felt like that leg kick was a little bit high and it was making him late and his head was moving all over the place. So they quieted him down just a little bit at the plate. And he took off. Well, Kevin has always hit. He hit in high school, he hit in college, he hit in the minor leagues. So, you know, sooner or later he's going to figure things out. Coming into this game. He's played three seasons, but he has just 758 at bats. And most good hitting coaches will say, you don't really know what you have until you get around 1,500 major league at bats. I think there's so much more in there with him. And I think as he gains a little bit more experience, it becomes a little bit more familiar with himself as a player and what he can and can't do. I think you're going to see more power. I think you're going to see more doubles. And with that experience, you know what else comes? You're not so anxious in these big situations. Down ball. Pedroia goes to Bogarts in second. Back to first. Not in time. That play just took a little bit too long to unfold, and Pilar runs so well, he's able to leg it out. He bounces into the fielder's choice. Red Sox have turned 133 double plays, but they're not going to turn this this one. Pilar runs too well, like you said. And now, if he can get a jump right here, this would be a good time to try and get into scoring position. For a couple of reasons, I think Rich Hill is going to throw Goins a first pitch curveball because Goins hit a curveball for a base hit in his last at bat, stroked it in the left. I bet you they come right back with it. Crossed everybody up. <laughs> Goins takes a strike. I was wrong, and Pilar still at first. <laughs> maybe that. Maybe this time. Maybe on this pitch. <laughs> Again, Hill just intent on. Waiting for Goins to ask for time. See, I wouldn't do that. If I'm hitting and I know that, I'm not stepping out of the box. I'm going to make him, the pitcher, step off. I'm ready. I'm ready to hit right here. Delay steal. Leon's throw is to the shortstop side of the bag. Oh, Pilar timed it perfectly. Leon's got a strong arm, but the delay steal. Enables Pilar to get his 20th stolen base of the season. They made a calculation, the Blue Jays, that we're not going to be able to straight steal, but we can go three hops and then a delay steal. 
Throws offline just a little bit, and Pilar with that stand-up slide. He is on the bag before he is tagged by Bogarts. Boy, another milestone for Pilar, his 20th steal of the season. A terrific all-around player that's only going to get better. That's a heads-up play right there. You, you mentioned that Leon has thrown really well this year. Hill's going to be tough to run on and the standard straight steal. So let's try the delay steal. As a runner, you take three quick hops and take off. 0 oh and 2. Sweeping breaking ball outside. Watch it. One, two, three, and then you go right before that ball hits the catcher's glove. What you're hoping for is the infielder is falling asleep. Well, the timing of it impacts the catcher as well because a catcher will take one last look at the base runner before the pitcher delivers the pitch, and he sees him static. He's not moving. So as that pitch is on his way, the delay steal, you take one, two, three bounces, and then you break. The infield as well. They'll look before that pitch is delivered to see if he's running. It's all about catching the defense flat footed. Two balls and two strikes on Ryan Goins. He singled the left his first time up. Breaking ball pulled right side. Pedroia to Shaw. Two down. So Blois now at third, but there are two outs. Cliff Bennington takes one outside. It's really interesting. You talk about pitchers in their arsenal of pitches. Hill has been very effective with basically fastball, curveball, and an occasional split change, but he's really done a pretty good job utilizing primarily two pitches. And the fastball isn't one of those blazers at 96 or 97, it's 91. I think he hides the ball well. I think there's some deception in his delivery where that ball gets on you. It's, it's a sneaky fastball. He's 6 5. And he'll throw that glove at you, and it's difficult to pick up the release point. One and two count on Cliff Pennington. See another 91 mile an hour fastball up in the zone, but Pennington fouls it back. Pennington now 31 years old. Leaves that breaking ball away. This would be a good time to come right back with it because the feel of that hanging breaking ball is fresh in his mind. He can make an adjustment. He's missed a couple of breaking balls this, this inning. Where they have slipped out of his hand. Rick Porcello didn't have the curveball the other night against the Blue Jays. Looks like they're going to go right back to it. As a catcher, I always like to do that when a pitcher hangs a breaking ball. It's really fresh in his mind what it felt like to throw the hanger. Come right back with the pitch on the very next pitch because he can make the adjustment, especially when it's a veteran like Rich Hill. Yeah, create the mistake and, and fix it. Two and two. Ground ball. Bogarts gets a big hop, takes his time. The inning is over. 
But we'll head to the fifth with the Blue Jays taking a 3-1 lead into the fifth. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. Host Craft Hockey Bill 2015. It's the Sharks versus the Canucks. Monday, 10:30 Eastern, 7:30 Pacific on Sportsnet. How about that, Buck? NHL hockey is back. That time of the year, and there are a lot of great Blue Jay fans in attendance, anticipating October baseball for the first time and hockey in its exhibition season. Jackie Bradley Jr. gets jammed. And he's going to flare that one into left field. Then Revere gets there and gets it back in quickly. A leadoff single for the Red Sox here in the fifth. When you're hot, you're hot. Jackie Bradley is hot right now. Hit the, had the big hit yesterday. He had two big hits. He had a double off the glove of Cliff Pennington, the second baseman, the two run home run, and now he swings and just drops one in the left field. Yeah, his double was in the seventh inning against the drawn in infield. And that snapped an 0 for 21 skip for Jackie Bradley Jr. Mookie Betts. He's dangerous against the Blue Jays, no doubt about it. He's got a 19 game hit streak against the Jays. This year he's hit 406. Well, you made a point about pitching bets away. It certainly looks like he's looking for something inside. Yeah, they've tried inside and he's just too quick. I don't care how hard you throw it or where you throw it. He is good on the inner half. Well, I think you got to stay away. I barely missed the inside corner with that fastball. We're in the fifth. Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead. Ground ball. Goins comes after it, shovels the Pennington back to first, and not in time. The throw pulled Colomello off the bag. It was going to be close had it been online because Betts runs very well. Owens did the right thing. He came in and and attacked that ball. He hard charged on it. 
That's the only way you're going to get Mookie Betts. you got to come to it. He makes a good throw. Pennington in his haste to get that ball over there. Pulls Colabello off the bag. But you're right. That would have been close. Dustin Pedroia. One for two so far. Blue Jays turned a double play in the first. They turned three double plays in this Red Sox series. Popped in the air into shallow right. Bautista with the glove up, shielding his eyes from that bright sun. Makes the catch. You can see Pilar was over there just in case Bautista. It lost that baseball in the sun. It's a bright, sunny day, and you can see the shadows of the players indicating that sun is high above Rogers Center, and everybody in the field has to converge on anything in the air. Two down now. Xander Bogarts reached on an infield hit in the fourth. He scored the run on Burley's air. You heard. Jamie Campbell and Greg's on talking about the heads up base running of Xander Bogarts and they're right on the money with that. With the shift and Ortiz hit the ball. He beat Josh Donaldson to third. The only real way to defend that with a left handed hitter in Burley the pitcher had to go to first because the ball was hit in that direction is for the catcher to rotate catcher. to third. Catcher has to rotate, has to see it. What's interesting about that is Josh Donaldson got a head start on Bogarts. He was quick. He got a head start at second base, but Bogarts is so fast, he was going to beat him there. Bottom of strike to Xander Bogarts. Betts was caught for just the sixth time trying to steal here on Friday night by Russell Martin. He's got a big, big lead. lead. Not running. Bogarts waits back and hits it past Pennington into right. Betts cruises around second. Xander Bogarts can hit. Two more hits this afternoon. He lined out his first time up. For Bogarts, he now has 180 hits on the season. That's second to Jose Altuve. A little curveball. Watch how he waits back and he just shoots that ball the other way. Kept his hands back, kept his weight back, recognized it, and said, "Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to try and pull this ball, but I'm going to just try and shoot it through the hole on the right side." He sends Betts all the way to third base. Yeah, he can hit. Real interesting defense now with Ortiz at the plate. Look at Pennington in shallow right. Goins has to stay relatively close to second with Bogarts at first. You can't let him take second. What this does is Mookie Betts can get as far off of third base as he wants. You're taught to get as far off as the third baseman. Well, look at where a third baseman's playing. He could go almost halfway to home. Donaldson breaks back toward third and Betts dives in. Well, Donaldson is pretty free to do that considering you're playing in the shift and Ortiz, you expect to pull the ball. So he will go through some signs and decoy base runners and coaches from time to time. Three and out to Ortiz. And you can bet he's got the green oh, light. You know he's swinging. Travis Shaw is two for two. He's on deck. Pete Walker talking to the bullpen. Oh, he was taken all the way. Surprise me. I give him a free shot. Plus, he squared around like he was going to bunt. Three and one now. Ball four. That'll load the bases. Let's see. First walk issued by Burley. 
the bases are loaded the Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead and the Blue Jays bullpen starting to go to work that's Liam Hendricks. Travis Shaw we mentioned he's two for two already to base it into center and a base hit to the first base side of the infield. Just missing on that inside part of the plate. Just missing it. And the patient hitters, Red Sox hitters, recognizing it and getting themselves in good hitting counts. There's another base hit. That's going to score two. Mookie Betts and Bogart score on the Shaw single to left. That ties it up. Travis Shaw, perfect afternoon. He's three for three. Well, he can hit. Doesn't try and do too much of that. The only problem with this pitch is up. Here's another cutter. Got to make him reach for it. He just doesn't reach far enough because the ball is up and he's going to shoot it through that hole for a two run single. It's a brand new ball game. 3 3 game. Pablo Sandoval for two goes after the first pitch. It's popped in the air. Polabello's after it, but it's going to be well back out of play. He's ahead 0 and 2. The Blue Jays defense has to make note of the base runners they have now. David Ortiz at second. He doesn't run well and Shaw at first. So should there be a base hit, you've got to really be aggressive in the outfield. Come hard charging. If it's hit hard, I don't even know if they're going to be able to send them from second base. One and two to Sandoval. Upstairs. Hit hard, but right to Cliff Pennington. Burley is out of the fifth, but the Red Sox, they scored two runs on three hits and have tied it in 3-3. Three, three.
now at Ben Revere, who before the game is spending so much time with fans, and we see what he does on the field, off the field, posing for pictures with fans. Every Sunday when we do the Sunday salute, he makes sure that he gets out and gives a big hug to whoever is being saluted. And even in the clubhouse, we see him joking around with his teammates. Last week when we were doing an interview with a bunch of media, there was Ben Revere sticking his own tape recorder in the scrum trying to get a question in. He's just a real fun-loving guy. He's challenged fans to play PS4 hockey. Very rare breed of guys like that that has so much time for the fans out there. Boy, he's been a good fit to this ball club, and you're right. He brings a lot of personality to this team. And he's done a great job hitting in the leadoff spot. Ben Revere had an RBI single in the second. It's a 3-3 ball game. Blue Jays got to solve Rich Hill. He's got six strikeouts through four innings. And there's that breaking ball. That last game he had, he had 10 strikeouts against Tampa Bay. Told you that in seven innings. Their hitters also were 0 for 9 against the fastball. One down on the strikeout. That's seven strikeouts. Let's check in with Jamie Kemp. Chris Medlin has given up three runs, but they're all unearned runs as Christian Colon made an air that led to those three Tiger runs. Boy, he just keeps dropping that curveball in. You know what he is? He's very comfortable and relaxed. He's just up there like he's playing catch with Sandy Leon. He's 35 years old. He's yeah. been around. And he drops that one just 84 miles an hour, and it really locked up Josh. Been around, and he has had success. When he came up with the Cubs, he was, you know, looked at as a strong starter for the Cubbies. Popped up out of play behind the screen. Rich Hill pitched with the Cubs from 2005 through 2008. He made 57 starts in Chicago. And then his injury problems kind of started. He had that shoulder surgery in 2009. Tommy John a couple years later. He's pitched in Cleveland in 2013. Got a couple of games with the Angels in 2014. And 14 games with the Yankees. In 2014, Rich Hill was in AAA Pawtucket just for two weeks. The Nationals released him on the 19th of June from their AAA affiliate. What didn't they like about him? <laughs> he looks well, pretty good to me. You know what? If you don't see him pitch in extended periods, you might not realize how effective he can be using that big curveball. And there's a changeup for another strikeout. That's eight strikeouts. Uh, Jose Bautista comes to the plate, and they're hoping to see a little bit more of this. First pitch swinging off of Robbie Ross. Sends that one soaring to left field for his 36th home run. A couple more RBIs that pushes him to 104. That's why you don't see too many fastballs to Bautista. He's had 10 extra base hits in the month of September. He's driven in 16 runs so far. After this game today, Blue Jays will have 13 games left on their schedule. This has popped up. You see what Hill did right there? He took a little bit longer rock back just to mess with Bautista's timing. I mean, he's a savvy veteran, and, you know, he's pitched as a specialist. He's pitched as a starter. He's pitched as a long man. But that last pitch was interesting. He just took a little bit longer pause over the rubber. I spoke to Rich this morning. And he said, you know, I went to 
the independent leg just to stretch out my arm so I might get another shot at starting. And so far he's been through a start and a half and he's looked good. Ten punch outs last time was he got now eight today in five innings against the Blue Jays. Split all the way down from the barrel to the knot, almost perfectly as Bautista gets aboard. It split right in the middle, the entire length of the bat. That's unusual. Breaking ball. Let's see where Jose hits it. Yeah, right off the end of the bat, and that thing came all the way. Look at that. He's got half a bat in his hand when he finishes that swing. The other half is down at third base. A two out base hit. And when Encarnacion got a base hit on a curveball back in the second. Edwin to take his parrot for a walk. <laughs> I'm on a jog. A jog around the bases. What? Breaking ball in there for a strike. It's two balls and a strike to Edwin in Carnacion. Edwin with 34 home runs. He's one shy of adding to the numbers for this trio. They'll give him three. 35 home run hitters. He didn't get any air under that one, or that might have been number 35. Just a little bit too quick. The Blue Jays have had just one trio of sluggers to hit 35 home runs and drive in 100 in the same season. That happened in 1998. Jose Canseco, Carlos Delgado, and Sean Green. And kind of shows one home run shy of matching that trio. Fouled it off the glove of Leon. So Sandy Leon's going to go out and talk about this next pitch. Obviously, a pivotal pitch in this 3 3 game. I don't know if they're going to challenge him. I, I just don't know if they could afford to do that. We saw what happened with Wade Miley when he tried to to challenge Edwin in yesterday's ball game. Fastball in her half, he rocketed over the wall in left field. Chris Colabello has struck out twice so far this afternoon. That might factor into Rich Hill's approach to Incarnacion. He dropped down, gave him a little different look, threw him that breaking ball for the second time today. Hill strikes out the side. We go to the sixth, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
Vegas hosts the Rays, and on the weekend of September 26th and 27th, it is Fan Appreciation Days presented by Allstate. Fun in-game activities and prizes to be won all weekend long. If you already have your tickets, get here early. Buck? Thank you very much, Barry. It should be a great weekend, and Rusnik Castillo goes after the first pitch, and it's a lazy fly ball in the center. One pitch, one out. This is a big inning, Pat. Yeah, I think it is. For the Blue Jays, you got the bottom of the order right here. You got Mark Burley trying to go get through six innings here and then see what happens. He faced seven batters last inning, six the inning before that. Gave up six hits and three runs for the Red Sox to tie it. Got to have a quick one right here. The only one, two, three inning of the game for Burley, Burley came in the third inning. They got Bradley Jr., Betts, and Dustin Bedroya in order. Two and one, Burley pitching here in the six, and Liam Hendricks is throwing once again in the Blue Jays' bullpen. That's popped up off the end of the bat. Donaldson waits near the bag and makes the catch. The all new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Jackie Bradley Jr. had a base hit to left field in the fifth. Had a two run home run in last night's game in the ninth. Right back up the middle, going near second. Bobbles the ball, and Bradley Jr. will be safe. That will be an error on Goins. He just couldn't find the handle. Looked like he dropped the ball when he went to. Transfer it from his glove. Mark Burley tries to kick at it. We've seen him do that before. It goes under his glove. That's right to him. But the transfer from the glove to the hand, watch the ball pop out. Can't find the handle. And Bradley is on. Bradley is not a real aggressive base stealer. He's just three for three. And certainly you would think Burley will keep him at first. Boogie Betts takes one outside. Betts is hitless in two at bats. He's also walked. Staying away, making him reach for it. Yeah, let's see if he can shoot the ball to right field. They're holding the runner on, so there's a big hole on the right side of the infield. Right there. Anything on the ground, he's going to get that thing through. Shoots this one in the air to right. Bautista is not going to get there. It hits on the warning track and bounces into the seats. Boy, this is a touchy situation for Burley. You've got him set up to throw one inside. But that's where Betts is really quick. Yes. If you throw it inside, it better be off the plate. I, I think it has to be off the plate. It's got to be a good cutter. And maybe you can jam him just a little bit. We have seen Navarro use that pitch very effectively. They're going to go in there. He gets it inside. Popped up. Shallow left. Revere calling for it. He will get there and Burley. Is through six. Good job by Burley and Navarro jamming Mookie Betts.
Behind the scenes with all your favorite characters. You've never seen the Muppets like this Monday on City. Chris Colabella will lead off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And if you have a look at his helmet, you'll see that it is absolutely filthy, caked on with pine tar. And I asked him about it yesterday, and he says he has this thing, guys, where he just never feels like he has a strong enough grip on the bat. He's always afraid that one of these days the bat's going to go flying out of his hand. So he puts the extra pine tar on his helmet so he can touch it between swings just to get that extra grip. He also says he was a big fan of Trot Nixon, and you could never see anything with pine tar on his helmet. It's something a lot of players can do now that they couldn't do years ago. Bouncing ball to Bogarts, and Colabella is out on one pitch. Under Bogarts makes an easy play of it. Rich Hill, what a job he's done for the Red Sox. At the start of this inning, he had pitched 12 innings in his two starts, and he's racked up 19 strikeouts. Of course, the Red Sox are in desperate need of some pitching, and they're going to rebuild their pitching staff over the offseason, and certainly Rich Hill has caught their attention. What a pickup. They got him after the Nationals released him at the end of June. He only gave up one hit and one walk in his last start against Tampa Bay. And this afternoon, Deanna Navarro has two hits by himself against Rich Hill, a two-run home run and a single. Pulls this one to Sandoval at third. In time, Rich Hill has nine strikeouts, and he's done it with just two pitches, basically. Yeah, fastball, breaking ball. Here's the heater. He's been throwing it in a good spot. All over the strike zone, inside, up, outside, down and in. Fastballs, and then he'll drop a change up on you. He's got a little split change, and then he'll drop down and throw a little bit of a breaking ball. We've got Revere twice, Donaldson twice, Encarnacion twice, Colabello twice, and Cliff Pennington just once. Looks like Sandy Koufax out there this afternoon. He sure does, and the Blue Jays one of the best hitting teams against left-handed pitching all season long, and Hill is battling them in a 3-3 game. Blue Jays have seven hits and three runs. The Red Sox have eight hits and three runs. That's off the end of the bat. Sandoval cuts in front of Bogarts and throws in time. Three ground ball outs for Rich Hill in the sixth. They'll go to the seventh. It's a 3-3 game. On. If a Blue Jays player hits a home run into the flight deck, your name could be drawn to win 25,000 WestJet dollars. For full contest rules and entry form, visit bluejays.com slash WestJet contest. But thank you very much, Barry Davis. A good crowd out there at the WestJet flight deck. And a new pitcher into the ballgame for the Blue Jays. Mark Burley goes six. Now he'll turn things over to Liam Hendricks. And there are the numbers for Hendricks. A career high 53rd game 
this season. 5 0 with a 254 earn run average. He's pitched once in this series. That was on Friday night's game. Through an inning, had a couple of strikeouts. To add to that total, he's done a heck of a job. He will pick up Mark Burley now in the seventh inning. He's going to have to face Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. Burley goes six innings. That gives him 185 and a third. And certainly he's. On a quest to pitch 200 innings for a 15 straight season. Hendricks gets one past Pedroia on the first pitch. Pedroia is one for three so far. Lead off men late in the game. They're huge. Got to get them off the base. Little chopper. Donaldson will have to hurry. Backhand throws, not in time. Leadoff man's aboard. Well, Donaldson did everything he could, but it was just a little swinging bunt toward third. Another infield hit for the Red Sox. They are placing that ball just perfectly. Josh Donaldson and Chris Colabello do everything possible to try and keep Pedroia off the bases. But he just outruns the ball. It's another infield hit. Dustin Pedroia is now five for seven against Liam Hendricks. Mind you, that was an infield swing and bunt. But the leadoff man's aboard in the seventh. Now you got to deal with Sander Bogarts. He's two for three already. He lined out in the first inning. Lined out to the shortstop. <laughs> That's when the Red Sox had runners on first and third. And nobody out and didn't score. Burley got out of that one with a line out to short and a double play off the bat of David Ortiz. Bautista has taken a step toward the line in right because Bogarts has gone that way this afternoon. He will shoot that ball into right. He got a base hit to right his last time up, and there's Bautista just a little bit more shaded toward the line. That was off of a curveball for Mark Burley. I think Bautista's thinking is the fastball. He's not going to try and pull the fastball. He's going to try and hit it to right field. That last swing suggests that he was trying to go to right field off of the fastball. Brett Cecil is ready in the bullpen. David Ortiz is on deck. Good pitch from Hendricks that ties up Bogarts. Cecil struck out Ortiz in the eighth inning in last night's game, then gave up an infield hit to Travis Shaw, and he was lifted in favor of Roberto Osuna. That was in the eighth. Oh, and two to Bogarts. He had an 0-2 base hit his last time up. This time he strikes out. Good pitch from Hendricks. That breaking ball down and away. He just flailed at it. You know, we talk about players who are in swing motor. You can just tell that he was wanted to swing. So Hendricks does the right thing, throws a breaking ball off the plate to get the strikeout. So one out man at first David Ortiz is the batter Brett Cecil coming in for a second straight day they'll face each other.
coming out, and David Ortiz, the scheduled batter. You mentioned it in the eighth inning in yesterday's game. These two matched up, and Brett had the better of it, striking him out. Threw him a lot of breaking balls. That good, sharp curveball. Now he gets Ortiz once again. Good numbers all the way around for Cecil in 55 games, an ERA under three. Cecil has been terrific. He's been dropped down into these situations in the seventh and eighth inning. Ortiz at the plate. One forty eight. That's Ortiz average against Brett Cecil. Four for twenty seven. There goes Pedroia. They're going to have to hold ground now. Donaldson has to go to third as Pedroia. Takes off and swipes second. That takes the Red Sox out of that double play situation. Wonder when that was going to happen. You see him just kind of moseying off of the base and he goes off first move and high leg kick. There really no chance. To get him at second base just a second stolen base this year. But a big stolen base is the. Red Sox now have the go ahead run in scoring position of Pedroia. Takes them out of that double play situation. Another good breaking ball. I don't think they're going to show him a fastball for a strike. And this guy is just too dangerous. He's too good of a hitter. With two strikes, Kevin Pilar has taken a couple of steps to his right, anticipating Ortiz going opposite field. And he strikes him out. David Ortiz strikes out on the Cecil breaking ball, and all he can do is shake his head and walk back to the dugout. It's a hard, sharp, sweeping breaking ball. One more time against Ortiz. Now Cecil gets on top of that one and really pulls it down. Travis Shaw is three for three, had a two run single in the fifth to tie it up. See, fourth time Shaw has had three hits in a game this season. He's had two four hit games. There's a good fastball. He's hunting certain pitches. You see him take that fastball right down the middle. He's looking for a breaking ball. Picked up on that as he has, so he's throwing him a couple of breaking balls now. Now, as a hitter, you're wondering, okay, I know that breaking ball's coming sometime. Well, maybe he'll throw another one. We might see the breaking ball now for the strikeout. Reach back for a little extra and got 96, but missed with the fastball. Bullpen. Hendricks gets a strikeout above us. Cecil gets Ortiz in Shaw. We'll go to the bottom of the seven. It's still 3-3. Three, three.
with MLB.tv. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on more than 400 devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Every night on every device, visit BlueJays.com for more details. And Buck, one of the cool features, too, is they'll let you know when something special is going on in baseball. And Julio Tehran had a perfect game going through six, just lost it. But this device and this app will tell you, hey, there's a perfect game going on. There was a, re a little red banner at the bottom of that box score that said perfect game, perfect game. So you made a quick look at that. He has since given up a base hit, so now he has allowed one hit through six plus. Goins, Pennington, and Revere in this 3 3 ball game. Fly ball. Not that deep. Mookie Betts, the right fielder. The all new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Cliff Pennington was the scheduled batter. This is Matt Haig, who had a pinch double last night with two outs in the ninth. He just almost hit it off the straightaway center. So Haig will come on and bat for Cliff Pennington against the left-hander Rich Hill. Pennington 0 for 2 in his two advance this afternoon. Sandy Leone out to talk about Matt Haig. There are his numbers in AAA. What a season he had. He is the MVP of the International League. Matt Haig swinging it. Fouls back that first pitch. That is Tommy Lane, the left hander. Noe Ramirez, the right hander. They both pitched in yesterday's game. Lane picked up the win with just one pitch. Well, Blue Jays have to figure out this guy right now. Hill has only given up two scratch singles since the second inning. Hill has been dynamite. Strikeout number 10. It's the second out here in the seventh inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. A whale of a ball game here this afternoon. It's 3-3 with two outs bottom of the seventh. Back to the top of the order. Ben Revere is one for three and an RBI single in the second. Rich Hill's been ahead all afternoon. Rich Hill has 10 strikeouts for. His two starts this season. He had 10 against Tampa Bay. He's got 10 today. His career high is 11. He did that twice. This has popped up. Jackie Bradley Jr. waits on it in center. Rich Hill. Seven strong innings. He walks off the mound after seven in a 3 3 tie here at Rogers Center.
baseball for members of the major league staff, minor league coaches, and alumni. Attend the Blue Jays National Coaching Clinic January 8th through the 10th at Rogers Center. Learn baseball tips and drills that you can take back to your local baseball association. Go to BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more details. What? Thank you very much. That's Darwin Barney who takes over defensively at second base. Cliff Pennington was lifted in favor of the pinch hitter. Now Barney takes over defensively. Brett Cecil facing Pablo Sandoval throws a first pitch strike. Sandoval, you might be wondering why he's not hitting right handed. He's no longer switch hitting. He's given it up. So it's lefty on lefty here to start the eighth. Mark Lowe is now warming up. This will probably be Brett Cecil's last batter. His job was to come in and face the lefties Ortiz Shaw and Sandoval. That's Rusny Castillo on deck. Why a guy switches this late in his career from a switch hitter? Wouldn't you want that breaking ball coming into you? I know I would. And he wasn't faring very well. No, he wasn't. For the season, he's batting 203 against lefty pitching, and that began when he was switch hitting. Sandoval batting 247 coming into this game. He's 0 for 3. Dropped his average to 245. Little chopper. Cecil boots it. Tried to backhand it and goes off his glove. A little swinging bunt out in front of home. And Sandoval will reach, and here comes John Gibbons. Cecil just tried to pick it up with his glove and couldn't make the play. Pitcher air on Cecil. Mark Lowe into the ball game to face Rusny Castile with a man aboard. Official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Mark Lowe pitched in yesterday's game. He threw 17 pitches, recorded an inning in a third. He had a hit, struck out a batter, and he is on here to face Rusny Castillo. He came into a tough spot in yesterday's game with the runner. At third base and just one out infield in gave up a double Jackie Bradley Jr. off the glove of Pennington. He was not charged for it with that error or that run. Now he's got to face Castillo. 
there's something flying around Mark Rowe on the mound, whether it's a bee or a bug or something, but he stepped off the rubber twice and swatted at something. Not sure what it is, but certainly got his attention. The Blue Jays have committed three errors this afternoon. It's their first three air game since July 12th. The final game in the first half. You can see the B buzzing around Mark Lowe, and he wants to make sure that he gets it away before he continues. That's the last thing he needed right now in this 3 3 game. Yeah, don't get stung, number one. Number two, get it out of there so your concentration isn't split. I'm a little surprised that the Red Sox aren't using a pinch runner in this situation. Sandoval reached on the air by Cecil. It's a 3 3 ball game. Maybe a Brock Holt, somebody like that who could come in for defense also. You can see Sandoval not really a threat to steal. But you also have to think about if you're the manager, a single to right field, can he go first to third on a base hit? They have Devin Marrero, Brock Holt, Josh Rutledge, all infielders that could take over at first. Two and one to Castillo. Ground ball. Donaldson will wait bare hands it and throws in plenty of time. Sandoval gets to second. Now let's see if they pinch run for it. Now that he's in scoring position. Castillo has done this a few times against the Blue Jays in the last couple of series. That topper where Donaldson's got to come in and barehand it. Uh, still no runner for Sandoval. Sandy Leon, a switch hitter, will bat left handed for the first time this afternoon. One out. Cut on and missed by Leon. The Troy Hawkins has been on the shelf for a while. He threw Wednesday in Atlanta and pronounced him safe, fit, and ready to go. He's been dealing with a forearm problem. Two and one. Mentioned the Blue Jays three errors. Burley committed an error that led to a run in the fourth. Goins committed his seventh error of the season in the sixth. And Cecil, his error allowed Sandoval to reach to start this inning. Now they're trying to pitch around these errors. Extra base runners on good teams. Tough to stop them. Three balls and a strike to the number eight hitter. And Jackie Bradley Jr. is on deck. He's been on base twice this afternoon. Fouled up the borrower's glove. Jackie Bradley Jr. has been on base four of the last five plate appearances. He doubled in the seventh in yesterday's game, homered in the ninth, and after striking out in the third, he singled in the fifth and reached on an air in the sixth.
Base hit to right. Sandoval held up. He didn't get a good read off the bat. And he moves to third. The ball gets away. But Lowe is there to back up Navarro. And there are runners at the corners and one out. Boy, we're seeing some crazy things by the Blue Jays today. Some plays that we normally don't see them make. Jose Bautista. He's going to come up and he thinks he has a shot, but you can see Sandoval for some reason doesn't read that ball right. But then Bautista comes up firing and overthrows Colabello. It bounces over the head of Navarro. And thank goodness the runner, Leon, is the catcher, first of all. He's not going to score. And Sandoval holds up. He doesn't score. Sandoval did a terrible job of finding out where Bautista was. Bautista didn't have any chance to make that catch, and he held up as if there was a possibility of a catch in right. Runners at the corners now, one out. Jackie Bradley Jr. I think that's where you got to pitch if Jackie Bradley's been swinging a hot bat, but if you've got the type of fastball that Mark Lowe has, I think you got to keep it up. The fastball he hit yesterday, they wanted to go away, but it was down and it came back out over the plate. Bradley Jr., tough man to double up. Hitting out of that left-handed hitter's batter's box. He's only grounded in the three double plays this season. Good breaking ball. Tight and late break. Up, down. Keep changing the batter's High plane. Fastballs up, sliders down. There's that high fastball. That's where you got to keep it because in yesterday's ball game, the home run from Roberto Osuna was right down the middle. He's got plenty of power. They called him back up at the end of July, and I think it's no coincidence that this is the team has taken off offensively since then. One and two. Checked his swing. Mark Lowe threw 17 pitches in yesterday's game. He's thrown 15 this afternoon. Wouldn't chase that one. See how he reached back for a little something extra? And it was up, but Bradley took it. I throw him a breaking ball here. Yep. Three, two, one out. He's hard charging for that fastball. We're going to challenge him. Popped it up. Pilar calls for it. Sandoval's tagging it third. Here's the throw to the plate. It's online. It's a good throw. Navarro can't handle it. Sandoval scores on the side fly. The short hop. Bounced off Navarro's glove, and the Red Sox have taken the lead. One of the things that we've noticed from Pilar is he's very accurate on his throws, and that one was right on line. They had plenty of time. I think the honor had some time to adjust where he was at the plate to get the big hop right here. Pilar gets behind it. He's going to get all his, his momentum coming towards the plate, and you can see it's on line. The honor shifted and the short hop didn't come up for him. Looked like it hit right on the lip of the artificial surface just short of the dirt and stayed down. Tough play for Navarro yeah. and the Boston Red Sox have taken the lead. It was a very tough play and he did shift to try and get that ball. 
But unfortunately for the Blue Jays, the ball didn't come up, and it's a sack fly. That's the first run charged to Brett Cecil in 30 games. An unearned run. He committed an error and allowed Sandoval to reach to start the inning. Actually, an earned run as Cecil committed the error and allowed Sandoval to reach. He had time with Sandoval running. Jackie Bradley Jr. with the sack fly. There are two outs now. Mookie Betts. He's hitless in three at bats. Rich Hill now in line for the win. Three and one. Sandoval scored on the sacrifice fly as Jackie Bradley Jr., another big at bat in this series. Sack fly to center. Great production from their number nine hitter. Mickey Betts was on his way to first. All might have been off the plate outside, but it's a strike three of two. Goes to Pedroia. He's had a two hit afternoon. Low called Navarro out from behind home plate. They want to talk about this next pitch. No time to be crossing up your catcher right here. You better both get on the same page. Make sure you know what you want. Low strikes out Mookie Betts to end the top of the eighth. But the Red Sox have taken a 4 3 lead as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Now, time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. Countdown to the last home game. Share your passion on social media with hashtag 22 Days Blue Jays and let the celebration begin. And our celebration that began in the East Coast stopped in Quebec City yesterday and enjoyed a little poutine. Of course, Quebec famous for that delicious but very unhealthy meal. Buck. 
Thank you very much, Barry Davis. New pitcher to this ball game with the Red Sox up four to three is Noe Ramirez. And Ramirez, he's got a lot of confidence in this youngster. He was charged with two runs on two hits in yesterday's game, and he's back up to face the meat of the order. They like his arm. They like the power in that arm, and they're putting him in these higher pressurized situations. So he gets the eighth inning, and he gets it against the tough right-hander, Ramirez. Did not report an out the eighth inning yesterday. Two walks, one to Donaldson, one to Bautista. They both came around to score last game. First pitch breaking ball to Donaldson as Ramirez gets ahead. Foul tip. Quickly 0 and 2. Rich Hill, the starter, goes seven innings, allows three runs on seven hits, and strikes out ten. It's the most strikeouts by a left-handed pitcher since Matt Moore had 11 strikeouts in June of 2013. And no walks. Didn't walk a batter. Nevin Marrero takes over defensively at third base for Pablo Sandoval. Ramirez strikes out Donaldson. One down. Jose Bautista. Jose hit a two run home run in the ninth inning in yesterday's game that got the Blue Jays to within a run. Ball on a strike. Bautista is one for three. He had a hit taken away from him by the shortstop Xander Bogarts in the third. Wow, Off speed pitch. That's nasty. He's got a good arm. He's got a nice loose arm. Those Ramirez. That's why they like him. Plenty of fastball, and then he drops this on him. Little frisbee slider. Bautista just out in front a bit. That was the changeup. And remember in yesterday's game, Josh Donaldson did the same thing to lead off that eighth inning. Hit a long drive to left field changeup. And that ball was foul. But then Ramirez didn't even come close to throwing a strike to Donaldson or Bautista after that. Off speed pitch, Marrero at third. Two down. Edwin is one for three. Single and scored on the Navarro home run in the second. Delivers a two out single. The outfielders are playing deep. That's another changeup on the inner half right there. And Encarnacion, you can see he's out front just a little bit, but Castillo is playing deep for this reason alone. No doubles. Rusney gets over there, cuts it off, and he's going to hold Edwin to a single, and that's going to bring. A pinch runner into the ball game, but a good defensive play. Dalton Pompey takes over as the pinch runner at first for Encarnacion. Edward finishes up two for four. 
Another good day at the plate for Encarnacion. Chris Colabello is 0 for 3. Base stealing speed. He's four for four in stolen bases. Pompey in his first game back with the Blue Jays entered the game as a pinch runner, had a steal of second and a steal of third. And eventually came in to score. If they do give him the green by here, it's going to be tough to run. Ramirez is quick to the plate, and Leon can really throw. Big sweeping breaking ball. This might be more, hey, if they split the outfield and hit an extra base hit, I need some speed at first base where he can score on an extra base hit. John Gibbons has used Justin Smoke in these situations in the past, but he opts to keep Colobello hitting in the eighth. He's come up with some big hits for him. Can he do it again? Oh, no. Pompey's oh. leading, and the ball gets away. And they may have had him picked off, but Shaw got the ball off his glove, and Pompey moves into the scoring position. He was picked off. He was leaning, thinking about trying to steal the base. One more time, watch. Leaning and now the throw is on target, but Shaw misses it. And the Blue Jays catch a break. Not only does he not get picked off, but he advances on the air. They give the air initially to the pitcher, but to me, that's Shaw's air. It went off his glove. He got in a hurry to put the tag on Pompey. Now Colabello can change his sights. Big part of the field. Way outside, not close. Two down, Pompey at second. The Blue Jays are down by a run. Colabello's been clutch all season long. Deanna Navarro is on deck. He's had a good day at the plate. Two for three with a two run home run in the second. Colabella well, takes a close one. It's now three and one. Another off speed pitch. If you're the runner at second base, Dalton Pompey. The infielder is not even close to him at second base. Get your primary lead. And then on your secondary lead, get as far off of that bag as you can. So you see Colabello swing the bat. You are running on contact. 3-1. Bouncing ball. Herrero takes a nasty hop, throws in time, and Ramirez is out of the eighth inning. Blue Jays leave a base runner in scoring position. We'll go to the ninth. Boston has a 4-3 lead.
for everything Blue Jays. And it's where you can vote each and every day for the play of the game. Do that by logging into sportsnet.ca and select your play of the game. Buckeye I imagine Blue Jay fans are very hopeful that play of the game comes up the say, bottom of the ninth. Yeah, like a big three-run home run or something like that, I'm Barry. Latroy Hawkins is pitching for the first time since September 11th in New York. He's had some forearm problems. He is into the ball game here with the Blue Jays down by a run. I was asking him about that on the last road trip. He says right on the top of my forearm. Said I actually had it uh, this season. Had it start in spring training and then in Colorado trying to make his breaking ball do a little bit more. You know in Colorado that thin air the ball doesn't move very much. He aggravated it just a little bit but he says he's 100 percent now and he feels it on his breaking ball he's got a tough test this inning Petroya Bogarts and Ortiz Red Sox with four runs on ten hits the Blue Jays three runs on eight hits Brian Ernoir says no swing it's two and oh to Petroya Three and zero leadoff man, very big out here. Pedroia reached to start the seventh with an infield hit. Bob Goins. Filabello. One now. The all new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Xander Bogarts has a couple of hits this afternoon. Struck out his last time up on the ground. Donaldson has it. In time, two outs. They made a scoring change on the air charge to the pitcher, Ramirez. It was switched to the first baseman, Travis Shaw. Charge with the air in the eighth inning. Brett Cecil, his run allowed was an unearned run as he committed the air, and that snaps his scoreless streak. The 29 straight games without allowing a run. Bobby Ross Jr. picked up the save. In yesterday's game, his third of the season. The Red Sox are without their closer, Koji Uahara. And then right behind him was Tazawa, and they've shut him down. Working on their third closer of the season. Comes in, makes the play to Colomelo, and Hawkins has a clean inning in the top of the ninth. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays are down by a run. Deanna Navarro, Kevin Pillar, and Ryan Goins will face Robbie Ross Jr.
16 on the pilot, Tom Parker, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, this afternoon, it's Deanna Navarro, his first at bat against Rich Hill, high heater, and he gets on top of this one and clubs it over the wall in left field for his fourth home run. That gave the Blue Jays a quick two to nothing lead. Deanna Navarro will circle the bases of our drive of the game. He will get to face another left-hander leading off the bottom of the ninth. This is Robbie Ross who came in to pick up his third save in yesterday's ball game. Ross 0-2 with a 4.04 earned run average. Fastball a little quick slider. The whip is a little high as we're going to have to make him throw some strikes. Bautista hit a home run off for Ross Jr. in the ninth. The two run shot the dead center and then right behind him Matt Haig hit a double. Off the fence in center. Gianna Navarro has had one multi homer game in his career. That was a three home run game. While he was with the Cubs against the White Sox. May 29th, 2013, Deanna Navarro had a three home run game. That's his only multi home run game of his career. Ezequiel Carrera loosening up should Navarro reach. Covers that outside pitch. She stays alive. Russell Martin. Getting his batting gloves ready just in case. Navarro, Pilar, and Goins, the scheduled batters. Darwin Barney is in the ninth spot. He entered the game defensively in the eighth. That's going to be foul. That's covering that outside pitch with the fastball. The pitch of choice might be that little quick slider. The honor is just trying to guard the plate. Popped up, playable over in foul territory. Travis Shaw makes the catch one out. The Red Sox and the Blue Jays are even nine and nine for the season, and their season series has been as close as you could get. The winds are the same. The runs, ERA, everything. Two teams very evenly matched. And you've seen a lot of games just like this afternoon's game. Close. One run games. Kevin Pilar had a bunt single in the second. Oh and two. Pilar and Josh Donaldson have the most hits against the Red Sox this season. They both have 26 hits against Boston. Russell Martin has grabbed the bat. He's on deck. Ground ball. Moreau wide of third throws in time. Blue Jays down to their final out. Boy, what a move by Tory Lavello to put Marrero into the ball game. He has had three chances in the last two innings, taken over for Sandoval defensively. He's a shortstop, and he played that one like a shortstop, showing off a lot of a lot of range. Here is Russell Martin. For six as a pinch hitter. That's with two outs and nobody on. Breaking ball evens a count at one and one. Justin Smoke 
He's come out on deck. Two balls and a strike. Now it's three and one. Oh. Brian O'Dora validated it down at first. Three and one. Martin needs to get aboard. Slider. Russell was thinking about tying this game up with one swing. Between the 3 1 swing and the 3 2 swing. That time they're a little bit more controlled, slowed things down, and just punches the ball to right field. Throws him another slider. You can see Russell, he stays back on that one and just slices it to right field for extra bases. Smoke batting for Darwin Money. There's that B again. <laughs> Robbie Ross Jr. swatting at that B that gave Mark Lowe problems in the eighth. Louis Rivera was calling timeout. They might want to go to the bench again now to get a pinch runner. Louis Rivera almost went into the field of play to try and get the attention of the umpires. And here comes Herrera. Herrera taking over from Martin who delivered the pinch double. Pitch strike. Smoke has the most pinch hits for the Blue Jays this season. He has six pinch hits, three RBIs. Ground ball foul outside of third. Justin, we we're talking to him in Atlanta. He says, he's a switch hitter. He says he has more power from the left side, but I feel I'm a better hitter. From the right side. His more natural position from swing. He's, he's a natural right handed hitter. He's 0 for 3 pinch hitting as a right handed hitter. 0 and 2, 2 outs. The Blue Jays have a three and a half game lead over the Yankees. The Yankees will play the Mets tonight in New York. And then they will be here tomorrow night for the first of three.
strikes out. Leon's throw to first. That's the ball game. The Red Sox have taken two of three against the Blue Jays for a second consecutive time. And for the time being, the lead in the East is down to three games. Blue Jays jumped out to a, a three nothing lead here, but the Red Sox, they keep coming and they keep coming. They score late again, just like in yesterday's ball game, one here in the eighth inning to take a big game. Blue Jays here. Going to have to forget this series. They got to get ready now for the Yankees. The Red Sox win it four to three. They have another good game against the Blue Jays. They win the series for the season, ten to nine. We'll see you tomorrow night. The Yanks in town. Here's Jamie Campbell, Greg's on Blue Jays Central. <laughs>